We have the following balance sheet and income statements we would like to compute to find the statement of cash flows. We know that in order to estimate the statement of cash flows, we need one income statement because the income statement is a flow account, meaning it is estimated for a whole period, such as a year. We also know that we need two balance sheet items because a balance sheet is a stock account, meaning it is estimated at a specific point of time. Therefore, to compare apples to apples, we need to convert a day to a year by finding the difference between the two balance sheet items. In short, we will use one income statement for 2019 and two balance sheet items, one of 2019 and one of 2018. We will use the change in the balance sheet items because we use this to get the difference between the two years. We never use the change in income statement items because we use only one year. We have three categories of statement of cash flows. We have the cash flows from operations, cash flows from investment, and cash flows from financing. Let's start with the cash flow from operations. Our first item is the net income in 2019, which is 4.9 million. Then we add back depreciation of 20, from 2019 of 10 million. Then we subtract the operating assets and add operating liabilities. From the balance sheet, accounts receivables and inventory are operating current assets. Accounts payables is an operating current liability. So, our next item is a negative change in accounts receivables. We use the negative sign because there is a negative relationship between the change in assets and change in cash. We use the change because we are finding the difference between the two years. Negative, open bracket, 26 minus 15, close bracket, which is equal to negative 11. Then, a negative change in inventory. Negative, open bracket, 28 minus 20, close bracket, which is equal to negative 8. Then, a positive change in accounts payable. We use a positive sign because there is a positive relationship between liabilities and change in cash. A positive open bracket, 15 minus 5, close bracket, which is equal to positive 10. So, net cash flow from operations is the sum of all of these items of $4.9 million dollars plus $10 million, minus $11 million, minus $8 million, plus $10 million, which equals to $5.9 million. Then, we will estimate the second category, which is the cash flow from investment. It refers to non-operating assets. In this example, we have only plant property and equipment, or PPE for short. We have two ways of estimating it either using PPE gross or PPE net. The first approach is a negative change in PPE gross, where we use the negative sign because there is a negative relationship between the change in assets and the change in cash. We use the change, as I said before, because we need this to get the difference between the two years. Negative, open bracket, 70 minus 70, close bracket, which is equal to zero. The second approach is a negative change in PPE net. Since PPE net means the value of tangible assets after we deduct accumulated depreciation, our formula will be a negative sign. Open bracket, PPE net in 2019 minus PPE net in 2018 plus annual depreciation of 2019. We use the annual depreciation because we measure the change in one year only. Negative open bracket, 50 minus 60 plus 10, close bracket, which is equal to zero. So the net cash flow from investment is zero. Then we will estimate the third category, which is cash flow from financing. It refers to non-operating liabilities and equity. Our first item is negative dividends in 2019 from the income statement. We use a negative sign because the firm distributes cash dividends to shareholders, so from the company's perspective, this is a cash outflow. Negative dividends of $4 million. Then we include a positive change in non-operating liabilities. We use a positive sign because there is a positive relationship between the change in liabilities and the change in cash. We use the change in balance sheet items because we get the difference between the two years. We can write a positive sign or leave it blank as the default is positive. 
Then we write changes in notes payables. Open bracket, 9.1 million minus 4 million, which is equal to 5.1 million. Then we write the change in current portion of long-term debt. Open bracket, 6 million minus 6 million, which is equal to zero. Then we write a change in long-term loans. Open bracket, 24 million minus 30 million, which is equal to negative 6 million. Next, we will write the change in long-term bonds. Open bracket, 25 million minus 25 million, which is equal to zero. Then we include a positive change in equity. We use a positive sign because there is a positive relationship between the change in equity and the change in cash. We use the change in the balance sheet items because we get the, we're trying to get the difference between the two years. We get the change in contributed capital only and we do not include the change in retained earnings as retained earnings is a part of the net income which is included under the cash flow from operations. If we did count it, we would be double counting. We write change in contributed capital, open bracket, 29 million minus 29 million which is equal to zero. So net cash flow from financing is the sum of all these items of negative 4 million plus 5.1 million plus zero minus 6 million plus zero plus zero again, which is negative 4.9 million. Finally, net cash flow is the sum of net cash flows from operations, net cash flow from investment and net cash flow from financing. Net cash flow is equal to 5.9 million plus zero minus 4.9 million, which is equal to $1 million. Net cash flow shows the change in cash between the two consecutive years. If you check the difference in each cash item between 2019 and 2018, you will get 6 million minus 5 million, which is equal to 1 million. And this is exactly the same as the net cash flow we just calculated. This means our calculation is correct. You might ask, so why do we need to make all these calculations if we could just get the difference in cash? Well, the answer is simple. We need to analyze the cash flow thoroughly by knowing the cash inflow and cash outflow of each category of the statement of cash flow. Then we add the beginning cash, which is the cash in the previous year, which is cash in 2018 in this example of 5 million. This will give us ending cash, which is cash in this year of 2019 in this example would be 6 million. If you check the amount of cash in 2019, you will find it is 6 million, which means our calculation is correct.